In this video, we're going to finish up the schematic, which means wiring up the LED functional block. Let's get started. A lot of the hard work in completing our schematic has already been done. All we're going to do is apply the principles that we've already illustrated. So we can do this pretty quickly. So let's get started. We're going to finish up wiring the LED circuit block. Let's zoom in and take a look at what we've got. So we've got the switch coming in, and right off the bat, let's identify that switch as this is going to be the LED off on switch. We highlight it, it brings up the properties page in the database for that specific element in the schematic and we're just going to change its name and we're going to call this the LED off on switch. And We're going to make it visible and that's going to connect all the LEDs in parallel. So let's connect them up. And of course, the other end of the LEDs, we're going to have ground. So let's add some ground. Yeah, it's a little bit congested here, so let's just clean it up a little bit. I'm going to highlight all of these guys. Just going to move them over a little bit. And the probe point is also going to have ground on one side. And we're going to be probing the high side of the resistor. Uh, and that's going to be where we connect the 10x probe. So let's connect him in. And again, neaten up just a little bit. This test point, we want to label as the LED current test point. So we highlight the test point, and we're going to call that LED current. And now at a glance, we can tell what's going on. So here's our circuit. <laughs> we're going to turn the LEDs off or on with this switch. When they go on, we're going to drive some current through the LEDs limited by the resistances, uh, and uh, we're going to measure the current through one of those resistors, the, the 1K resistor, just to verify our expectation. And remember, we expect it's something like 3 milliamps of current, and that means the voltage across this resistor is going to be something in the order of 3 volts. So we're done. It really is that simple. Let's take a look at our whole schematic. And we see it's a pretty simple schematic. By partitioning the schematic into blocks, we can kind of debug each of the blocks. There's a clean input and output to each block that isolates the function of each block from the other blocks. This is going to help in the design. This is going to help in the layout. This is going to help in the debug. We've got power coming in. We've got an indicator light. We've got a test point. We've got a switch three really important features that will help us in the bring up and debug. Has no impact on the functionality of the circuit, has a lot of impact in risk reduction. For the 555, I think we've got it connected up correctly. We've got our decoupling capacitor on it, we've got our switch. We're going to use the uh, LEDs as the indicator of is it a function or not, and we've got a test point over here. And in the LED section, we've got a switch to isolate them so we can test the rest of the circuit before turning these on. I think they're connected correctly, and we've got a test point over here. I think we're done with the schematic. But before we say the schematic is complete, there are three additional tests that we're going to want to do. The first is apply our own Mark 1 eyeballs to the schematic, and just to make sure, have we caught all the potential errors? We've kind of walked through, and I think I have pretty good confidence that it's the correct circuit. First step. Second step is we're going to apply an electrical rule check to it. We're going to verify the schematic as well as we can. There's limited verification we can do automatically. And after we've done that, the third step is we're going to ask someone else to take a look at our schematic so we have another pair of eyes to do a little bit of a design review. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at doing that electrical rule check.